When Glaucus finally opened his eyes again, they were standing on a shiny marble floor that stretched into craggy mountain tops and was hemmed with clouds and stars. Before them was a great golden throne, and lounging on it was a huge bearded man, eating figs and scratching his balls absent-mindedly. Omer, oh, baby, how the Hades are you? You're looking thin. Doesn't this slave know how to feed you? Come in, sit down. We never talk anymore. The huge man waved a hand, and they were seated. Z, you old goat licker. Don't put on the howdy-do for me, you snake in the grass. What do you want? Homer sneered. Glaucus lowered his head away from Zeus's gaze. Oh, homie, you hurt me, baby. You're just harshing me out with all your negative waves, man. You can't just talk to your old friend, exchange a few pleasantries, say hello, how you doing? No, you gotta lay on those negative waves. Sheesh, I thought we was pals and all. Zeus put on a mock look of hurt. Okay, fine. What have you been up to, Homer sighed. Zeus brightened up. I've been transforming into fowl and cattle to deflower quite a few virgins, he bragged. I've got at least three immortals on the way. But I think one might be screwed up and turn out to be a kraken. You know, same old, same old. What about you? Still digging your crazy beats? Still up to your cock and bull routine, eh? Homer chuckled. <laughs> yeah, the kid and I still travel around. Tell my little tales for food and drinks and tips. Sometimes the lady of the house wants to shag a celebrity and I get to sheathe my sword at the expense of the husband. Mostly it's a lot of nights of sleeping on the ground. Glaucus smiled at his master and shucked the goatskin bags from his shoulder. What do you got there, boy? Zeus asked. W w wine sir? Glaucus stammered. Bring me some. I'm dry. Zeus held out a cup as big as a bathtub and waited. Glaucus made haste and poured a full goat skin in. Zeus upended the cup and made a sour face, and sparks of lightning shone from the edges of his eyes. Say what you want about those sodomites. They do make good wine. Bacchus must have slipped them the recipe. So you've had your drink and we're all caught up. What can I do for the big Z that he can't do for himself? Homer asked. Homie, baby, I owe you a favor and... He began. You owe me three, Homer interrupted. If anybody is keeping count. And I'm not. I'd just like to mention that time in Cyprus, the time in Lesbos, and then again in Luxembourg. Unless Pythagoras has got the wrong end of the stick, that's three. What I got lined up for you, baby, is going to be worth seven, no, no, nine favors. You're going to make so much money, you're going to have to hire dudes just to count it for you. And the broads? Jeez! You thought you were pulling in a decent amount of tail now. Just wait until you see the action you get once I lay this shit on you. You'll be eating oysters for breakfast just to try and keep up, and your cock will be in a splint. Homer sighed. <sighs> Enough of the soft sell. What's the gig? I need you to write a story for me, Zeus said in a soft voice. Bullshit! You know I don't work on commission. Homer leveled his sightless gaze at Zeus, and it convinced Glaucus that he could have made he could make the Pharaoh's tax collector run in fright. I need you to cover a war for me, Zeus began. And before you say no, hear me out. This war will send all of Greece into complete chaos. There's no way to avoid it. Many brave young men will have to die. Now ask yourself, as a Greek patriot, 
Can you let these thousands of men die unsung? Can you let them fill nameless graves in a far-off land without a word to send them to the ferryman with? Homer sat for a long time and thought. There's no way to avoid the war. Zeus shook his head. Go shit, Homer swore. All right, I'm in. What's my angle? That's the beauty of this story. It has it all. Passion, romance, action, comedy, drama, tragedy, sex, the works. Shit, there's enough stuff here for a sequel. If you write this, you'll be remembered longer than I will, Zeus gushed. Okay, but what starts the war, Homer probed. Love, Zeus said simply. Oh, that old saw, Homer muttered. What the fig, he said. I've been looking for some new material anyway. I'll do it. After all, it's only poets and writers who can save the world. We've left it in the hands of others for too long. The boy must remember none of this, or he won't be able to help you in telling your tale. Say hello to Odysseus for me. Zeus snapped his fingers, and Glaucus and Homer were in the whirlwind again. I'm not supposed to remember any of this, Glaucus thought again. Glaucus opened his eyes to a sunny beach, with seabirds cawing overhead, and Homer leaning over him as he lay flat on the sand. I should have told you not to drink the merchant's wine, Glaucus, as they spice it with the lotus flower. Come on, get up. The war's about to start. Glaucus rose to his feet and wondered how he had gotten here. But his curiosity was even more piqued when he saw thousands of Greek ships in the harbor. Doc.